Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover signal transduction. Before you proceed with signal transduction, make sure you understand how reception works, which is the first part of cell signaling. And here are three questions that you should be able to answer before proceeding. Signal transduction is the step between the reception of a signal, usually from the outside of a cell, and the cell's response to that signal, what's going to happen. So you can think of signal transduction as the go-between, kind of like in a relay race, where relay racers are passing a baton from runner to runner. It's a very important step, and it's a step where lots and lots of regulation can take place. In other words, it's where cells can control what they're going to do between, based on the, the signals they're receiving and the actual responses they're going to produce. Now, the most important part of, of um, transduction are protein molecules in the cytoplasm called protein kinases. And these kinases are inactive until they are phosphorylated, which means they don't do anything until they have a phosphate group added to them from ATP. So if you look at this diagram, you can see how a signal molecule causes a receptor protein to change shape. That shape change is, is transferred through the cell membrane or the plasma membrane to the cytoplasm because this embedded protein projects all the way through. It then activates a molecule in some way. All right. Now what happens between the message reception from the environment or from the extracellular matrix out here is that this signal has to travel through the cytoplasm. And the way it travels is the signal is literally relayed from protein kinase to protein kinase in what's called a phosphorylation cascade. It's kind of like a chain of dominoes falling over. All right? As protein, for example, this activated molecule, which was activated by the receptor protein, interacts with the first protein kinase, causes it to become active. Now, this active protein kinase acts as a catalyst. All right? It acts as a catalyst to signal. Oh, let me go back here. It acts as a catalyst to signal the next protein kinase to be phosphorylated, which then signals the next and the next until this chain finally activates a protein here down at the end, which is what's causing the, the response that the cell is going to produce. All right. So basically, transduction happens when a molecule activates a whole series of other molecules in a chain that's the signal is actually being carried by a phosphorylation cascade until finally a protein is activated by being phosphorylated that's going to generate the cellular response. All right, so it's kind of like a domino effect. And these protein kinases, as soon as they're activated and pass the signal on to the next protein kinase, they are quickly deactivate, deactivated by enzymes in the cytoplasm that dephosphorylate them. So this is a very fast moving process because the distances we're traveling here are very, very small. Now, second messengers are molecules that are not proteins. Okay, now the first messenger, so to speak, is going to be the ligand or the extracellular um, signal molecule that first bonds to the receptor on the cell membrane. All right. Now, second messengers are small non-protein molecules that carry or transduct signals inside cells, and we call them second messengers. Now, there are three examples that your book illustrates, cyclic AMP, calcium ion channels, and something called inositol triphosphate. Uh, you need to know one of these well enough to be able to use them as an example in an essay. That's really what you should shoot for. Um, I'm only going to go over the first one, cyclic AMP. You can refer to your book if you want to see how calcium ions work and how inositol triphosphate can work as a second messenger. Now, cyclic AMP was discovered by Sullivan when he was doing his experiments with epinephrine. Remember epinephrine when we back when we talked about signal reception? And what Sullivan noticed is then when, when the signal molecule, such as epinephrine, bonds to the receptor and causes the response, he noticed that in the cytoplasm of cells that were responding to epinephrine, the increase, they, there was a cytoplasmic increase in the concentration of a molecule called cyclic AMP, or CAMP. And what he was able to show is that CAMP, or cyclic AMP, is acting as a relay molecule to a protein kinase cascade of phosphorylation. So what he, what he discovered is the idea of second messengers, molecules like cyclic AMP that act as a go-between 
between the first messenger and the, the cascade of transduction that's going to generate the signal. All right. Um, very important discovery, and as I mentioned earlier, he won a Nobel Prize for this in the 1970s. Now, we're going to stop there, and the next uh, videocast is going to be about how cells respond to signals. Thanks for listening.